Hello everybody and welcome to your uh, I believe 18th SFML tutorial uh, platformer tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be start off we're going to start off by creating the menu manager class and as you guessed it uh, helps manage creating windows I mean menus oh my gosh sorry okay so this class is going to be called menu manager and uh, what we're gonna do now is we already created a file named menus uh, and if you haven't then uh, create one right now and there's a few attributes that we're gonna be loading in okay so we're gonna be loading the position the axis uh, the animation and uh, for the position right now we're just gonna put it at a hundred and separated by a comma or any other separator you want to but I'll do a comma uh, the animation and last but not least we'll put a line and then a line won't be used this tutorial but hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get around to it and right now I'll just put it to none and the line is basically what, what we're gonna use in case if the person doesn't want a position so they set the position to none or something or they set the position to a negative value or something uh, then what's gonna happen is that if we set our, our line to like say center or something what it will do is it will align every single um, menu item to be um, centered um, whether it's in the y axis or the x axis uh, or if you want to be left um, towards the left hand side or, or right centered or whatever right so you want a precise value for all of them then that's what a line will be used for uh, so I'll just give you kind of insight on how that works so a menu item can be either be an image or it can be an item so for now we're not going to use images uh, but I will I don't think for none of the, for the menus I don't think we're going to be using any images but I will show you how to incorporate images now because I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate images it will uh, the two the series will last a bit longer because I will have to do more code in order to uh, a, for to compensate for both but uh, I guess will be worthwhile in the end I guess so you have more flexibility uh, so we have our start and end commands and we have our loading our menu items and we have our properties and stuff like that uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our basic uh, functions that we need so load content uh, we have unload content we have update and what we gotta do is include a, a bunch of stuff so SFML graphics uh, we need to include animation and let's include fade animation okay so we're gonna say render window And for the draw, the same thing, SF render window. And also, we're going to take in an input manager. So we need to include that as well. Uh, just so the menu can do its own uh, custom input. So, okay. Uh, so in the private section, what we're going to need to have is. Uh, we're going to have to have our two-dimensional vector uh, so for the file manager I need to include that as well so include the file manager class so we have our attributes and our contents so now let's just make an instance of the file manager class and we'll name it like that uh, so what we're going to need is we're going to need a bunch of stuff so we need a, a std vector of a 2d vector of animations and we'll make that a pointer uh, we'll make a temp animation Uh, so we can store the animations in there we need to have a, a vector of images so first of all we just need to have a sf image image 
the sprite sprite so we loaded that in there then we got to store it in our in our vector so we have a sf image vector and we'll say images and we'll say sprites uh, I'll just say menu images because uh, they're going to be converted into sprites anyways S so now we need to have menu items so we need to have and I know this is a lot but uh, we need to have a string for menu items and we need to have a sf vector 2f for a position we need to have a float for the or int for the axis we need to have uh, we need to add another string vector too for the animation types uh, and what else do we need we need a align and call the string align and I know it's kind of messy, so if you want to kind of like uh, arrange it in a neater pattern, then you can, but uh, for now, I'll just leave it like that. So we're going to have our menu manager, uh, load content, and in our load content, we're going to have to take in a string, so uh, menu ID. Okay, so we got to add that in there, because we have to specify which menu we're trying to load in. Uh, so what we're gonna call our file dot load content and the file name is gonna be load slash menus dot cme uh, we put in our attributes our contents and last but not least our menu id so we're using that overload that we created so now we gotta make uh, our two for loops attributes uh, dot size and this should all be familiar to you and just going, we're just gonna make a string uh, that's gonna store the current attributes and we can make one for contents as well so con for content and we store the contents i and j so what we're gonna say is so let me move this up so we're gonna say if attributes is equal to item uh, then we're gonna have to store the menu item so we're gonna say uh, menu items dot push back our contents simple so else if att is equal to image so we're gonna have to say image dot load from file and we're gonna have to load our content and then we're gonna have to say sprites dot set image and uh, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that um, images dot push back our image and then we'll say sprites dot set images uh, dot size minus one Sorry, the images images dot size minus one, and we'll say menu images dot push back our sprite. And the reason why we gotta do it like this is because uh, the sprites uh, point to the images. Okay, uh, so therefore uh, we gotta make sure that this sprite is indeed pointing to this image in, in here. I'm just doing this to be on the safe side. I don't know if we point to if we just point to this image if it, if it will change anything. Uh, but we just gotta make it point to it. So then. Uh, therefore everything's fine I believe it'll be still the same because if this image is pointing to this and this is stored in here then uh, like I'm thinking that it I'm not sure but just to be on the safe side I'm just saying spread dot set image is equal to whatever we just allocated in here and then we um, push our sprite back in there 
So that's for the images, and let's finish off everything else. So we'll save attributes equal to position. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, we're gonna make a temporary vector two. So vector two, or actually, I uh, will call position. We'll make it two. So we'll say position uh, zero is equal to. Uh, content dot uh, subret I mean substring and we got to get the first numbers we got to get it from 0 to uh, dot find and we got to find the comma and then we'll get that for the position 0 and for the position 1 we'll say uh, dot con dot substring con dot find and we need to find the comma again plus 1 all the way uh, to the end okay and then therefore all we got to do is we got to say that uh, position dot X is equal to ATOF uh, position 0 dot C underscore string and position dot Y is equal to ATOF uh, position 1 and a C string and just to see if we get the desired result, we'll just uh, print it dot x and just put a space between them and position dot y. Okay. Uh, and I think I'll and you know what let's see if we can add in one more so we'll say that if attributes equal to a line uh, then we simply just say uh, a line is equal to our content now I'm gonna end it here and then we'll finish off the rest of this loading in and doing the rest of the stuff we need to do in the next tutorial so I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye